Okay. So can't remember if I explained. I'm just gonna redo some of the stuff. Um so to stop recording and um, re-recording some of this. So um uh, cool. so once you reach um once you reach the end of your like path it'll actually there's like a little circle I don't know if you can see um if you click on that it will finish the path and it'll actually um complete the the path that you that you made um, and then I'm gonna turn off this adjustment layer I'm actually yeah because I don't need that anymore and then yeah and then there that's that's the entire um, path that we're gonna use but that's only the outside I don't know if you can notice there's some insides here so on default the pen Ah, uh, man, where is this now? If you look at the top, there's this little icon, exclude overlapping shapes. I think that's the default, but it might be on one of these other ones, which is not ideal. You do want it to, to have it on that. I'll show, I'll show you why in a moment. Um, if it's not on that, it might, it might not pick up. Like, if you start making a uh, a new, like, okay, so you want to have your path. Make sure your path selected. Make sure you save your file. It's always good to save. And then, if it wasn't on this, um, exclude overlapping shapes. If I start a new thing here, it's not gonna recognize this as being, like, a hole that I want to cut out. Um, which is what I want because this is obviously not part of the this bit is part of the background here that I don't want um, in my selection so just make sure if you're having issues with your pen tool for whatever reason or um, your selection I'll show you um, a bit later how we're going to use this um, path that we're making then it's usually because of that, this uh, setting. Um, another thing is, I don't actually know if this is default as well, but over here, you want this to be a path. It could be set to shape, which is not, it's not ideal. Because, yeah, we want to save this as a path. Cool. So I'm just going to do this bit. Selected it. Let's move it a little bit. Let's see. So I noticed this video is a little bit longer than what I wanted, but I might, uh, like I said before, I might skip parts of this and just speed it up. But they, I know I did say some random sh stuff here and there that might be like cool tips and tricks. So I might not do that. We'll see how it goes. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna do this quickly and roughly and I'm gonna spend years making this video. Yes, let's pause. Yes. Okay, so it's always good to just Make sure that you're achieving the right thing. Don't want to cut off things, like I said before. Cool, so there's a path, there's another hole here. Make sure it's set to 200%. Um, so Photoshop has certain like percentages that it's just better, like, like 33% is a good one. 66% um, is also, 
100%, 200% tends to be um, if it's like in between, sometimes the, the the image like pixelates in a weird way, and you might it might look right, but when you zoom in further, you'll, you'll see that that you actually didn't follow the edge of whatever you want to be etching um, properly. So yeah. yeah, I mean it also depends on the image. Sometimes 200% might be too much. To zoom into actually, um, you see here is a little bit of cre creases. I'm just going to try to make that more of a smooth curve to make it more appealing to the eye. Cool, got that. Near the holes. Yes, here's the hole. Okay, I'm just going to trim that off as well. I'm going to do this a little bit rougher, there. When it comes to like little pieces like this, you don't have to obviously include all of them. It doesn't have to be, <coughs> doesn't have to be like 100% accurate. Like no one's gonna know, you're the only one that's gonna know how the image used to look, so... You'd be surprised how much you can get away with. Especially in print, like... Print quality, because it adds like a lot of grain and stuff that uh, hides a lot of mistakes. It's quite forgiving. Uh, anything else? Ah, uh, yes. You can see I, I'm, I'm scrubbing out and in and out a lot with uh, the Z. So it's always just Z, and because scrubby zooms out, if you pull um, left, it zooms out. If you pull right, it um, zooms in. Oh shit, it zoomed out too far. And here we go, about to the. <coughs> ah, I need to drink some water. Talking too much. So we're back at the blurry bits. I'm just gonna roughly guess what it should look like. It's obviously not accurate. It's like impossible to really know what the it looks like, but you can kind of guess and just make up your own mind of what it should look like. Quickly. Sorry if you can hear the clicking. Like I said, my mic's pretty bad. It picks up all the background noise. It has no like filter or anything padded filter thing over it. So obviously the image I chose is it's a bit more advanced, like and that's why it's taking a bit longer to to do all this stuff. Um, generally, if you if you like start out with this sort of stuff, you tend to work mostly on like easy easier things, not full body images. Like full body things, or it, it can always like take quite long um, to do but when I started out I started with like like lipsticks and things like you know stupid products like makeup products and things um, often like dresses just on coat hangers but that's a bit more advanced because you want they I don't know if it's a fad anymore but they want to usually they don't want to see the coat hangers, so they would do two shots. One where it's the dress is like on a coat hanger, and another one where it's on a mannequin, and you would have to combine the neckline of the the mannequin, 
and the coat hanger will um, it's hard to explain, it's like easier to, to show, but obviously I can't show that now. So I don't know shots like that, but it makes it look kind of like the, red, the dress is being worn by like an invisible person or a ghost or whatever. It was a fad for a little while when I started. Just um, filling in all these holes. Okay, so I'm not doing this super accurately because it's, uh, I'm just trying to do it as quickly as possible. Uh, I chose this image specifically for so that it had, it had like a lot of little interesting like indents and things. So I thought it would be a pretty good image to show. Uh, different style, like different. Uh, uh, I don't know what the words are. Different. Yeah, if I can think. Different shapes, I guess. Different. Uh, like if you need to etch different shapes, you you can kind of reference to this. Okay, so I've done that. I think that's everything. Uh, wait, no. Oh uh, no, wait, that's uh, reflection, so that's fine. Cool. So we've got our path, it's going to be to save again. Um, then if, so now we're going to use the path to to separate this image from, from its background. You can right click here. Um, make selection. It's going to ask you. So most of the time you can just use leave all this um, as it is. But feather radius, you want to set that to zero pixels at first. So everything should be fine. Just click OK, and there, then you have selection, and you go back to your layers. So a lot of. Um, sort of more junior people tend to usually do is they would just um, they would like delete the, the, the background it's not ideal it's like working destructively um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a copy just to show so let's say I've now, I guess so to make a copy of layers, um, Control or Command J, if you have the layer selected. You can also just right click and uh, make a duplicate layer. Because there was a selection, it will automatically make it into, uh, it'll only copy the, the bit part that, that's been selected. So let's imagine that, that I've done a delete the, the background, right? Um, but now the hair has been like deleted because if you remember I, I went around the hair roughly so now if if this other layer my, my backup or whatever didn't exist then you're fucked because now you can't go back and um, like re get like information that's that's now it's permanently deleted, so that's not ideal. You, you don't ever want to delete things like that. And if I want to make changes to this, like image, like to the, you know, get bits of the background back, I can't. Now, so, so don't do that. Rather, um, I'm just going back in the history here. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that the the group that we made earlier is selected and then you click like down here it said add layer mask so what it'll do is it'll create a mask so it, at first glance it looks exactly the same as the deleted um, layer or whatever that I showed just now um, 
but I can what's great about this is you can turn off the mask and also um, it's shift click if you shift click over the mask so none of the information has been deleted and you can actually go and edit your mask if you want you can just paint on it with um, if you press B that's your paintbrush it might be like on pencil or whatever but yeah press paintbrush um, it's going to put the opacity on 100 um, you can press the number of keys uh, in increments of 10% so if I press 3 it'll go to 30 if I press 5 it'll go to 50 or whatever zeros uh, 100 um, and then just press the D key to make sure that you're here at the bottom I'm going to show you this if this was like uh, well, it, uh, because I have my mask selected, so masks is, only works um, in scales of black and white, so that's why it's grey at the moment. But um, let's just go to there. there we go. So if I had different colors to select, you press D, it just goes to the default, which is black and white. You can press X to toggle between the two. The one that's um, in front is the active one. So at the moment that is white. So how masks work is um, I'm gonna just toggle this mask on. So this is the actual mask, right? So the white bit is like 100% white is 100% visible, and 100% black is. 100% um, uh, hidden. Um, so, um, to toggle the mo to look at your mask is um, Alt click. I don't know if I said that, but yeah. So what you can do is, because of the mask, you can actually go and paint wherever. So I'm painting with white. You can see, and that'll unhide um, whatever bits are hidden, and then I can the exact same. Just paint in black. So I press X to toggle between this to to hide it again, and it's great because it's never the pixels never get deleted. So you can always just go back and forth for a, in such a way. Um, the other reason is why I actually made the folder, and instead of putting the mask on the the image is let's say um, so let's say now that the so I've just duplicated the layer one is the mask has the mask turned off one has the mask um, you can't see the difference now because it's the same image just stacked on top of each other so let's say I wanted to add color adjustments to this masked um, element like this, right? So at the moment, it's editing the entire um, image or everything that's below below this. I can clip this by holding down Alt and then going in between the layers. It'll make like a little arrow like this, you can see. I can clip that to the mask, but only now it'll only affect that bit, if if you can see. Um, but personally, I don't like I don't like clipping um, things to layers. It's it is a bit of a preference, but it's also I find it's very clunky to. Okay, so let's say I'm, I'm doing this right. I'm just going to try showing something. Now I'm going to add more like adjustments to this right. Now if I keep clipping things, it's going to become really like. It's just going to get clunky, and if. I don't know, it's just like, it's just, I don't like working like this. I'm just going to delete all these. So, when it's in a group, <coughs> I just want to put the background layer. Um, to move layers around, you just click and drag them, and then there, there'll be like a little, I don't know if you can see, there's a little bar there. Um, that's where the layer will move to. So, this is my background. I'm just going to turn this off. Actually, let me keep this on. I'm going to 
so to delete a mask you right click delete player mask okay so this this layer is in the group right so now if I make um, you see so having it in a group with the mask on the group you can chuck any other a bunch of other layers into the group and it'll it'll only affect whatever's below it in like adjustment layer specifically it'll only affect what's below it in that group um, not well, no, well in that mark if it's masked it'll only affect it in that um, specific group it's the same as the clipping layer thing but I find it just easier um, less clunky I don't know to two words that's uh, maybe it's a personal preference but I, I feel like it's better Okay, so I'm just going to delete that again. I'm going to delete this background. I'm going to need that. Um, okay. So the first thing I usually do once I've made the edge, I've got the mask. I'm going to hold command, um, control or command. If you see here, my cursor um, it changes into a little like a rectangular selection thing. And I'm going to, while control click on this, you see it makes it made a selection. So what it it does, it basically selects the mask. Um, I'm going to invert that selection by control shift I. You see here, select inverse. And then I'm going to go here up to select, modify, feather. I'm going to feather this by one pixel. Um, so it's hard. Let me let me just undo. Not undo, but um, okay. So I just deselected out of command or control D. That deselected. I just want to show why I'm doing this. It's going to make a solid. Um, let's make just solid color. Just to put that as a as a background. Um, I used 50% uh, gray, but maybe I should use a darker one. Let me use black. Oh, maybe black's too harsh. Color. Um, so I don't know if you can see, the parts of the background is still showing through my mask. But then at the same time, the mask is also very crisp. Um, that's not when it's crisp like this, it, it looks like it's been cut out, which is not ideal usually because, I mean, if it's on a white background, if it's going to be used like on a on a plain like matte background or white background, it's it's usually fine. But if you want to want to actually change the background to, I don't know, maybe you want to put it on a mountain top or something, or put it by the sea or whatever. Um, She's gonna look like cut out um, if you don't like soften this crisp edge a little bit. So that's why that's why I'm doing this um, feathering thing. So I make the selection, command click on the, on the mask, see selection active, uh, inverse selection, control or command shift I, select inverse. You can also um, you can actually also go select and then just go inverse. There you see, shift control I. Um, then modify, uh, feather one pixel. So this is feather to selection. I'm going to hide this with command um, H. So it hasn't actually done anything. It's just only feather to selection. So with um, make sure this is set to black and white here by the colors. Um, if, if it's not just press D it will automatically and then if you press I'm going to try to show you but if you press command or control and backspace I'm going to do it three times um, so backspace fills with the background color um, what's the foreground color I think it's alt yes okay so I'm going to do it so if you hold Alt and Backspace, that fills it with the foreground color. So depending on which way this is, but you want to, you basically want to fill it with black, right? So because the mask has been inverted, 
what it does is it crops in the mask from from the black side if you're filling it with black it crops in by one pixel so I'm going to just go back um, a few steps here in the history just to show you the before and after so that's the before right you can see it was like really crisp and sharp and cut out and just looks cut um, oh shit sorry um, but then if I feather it three times now you see it's nice and like smooth it won't look super different if you like zoom out and stuff but if you add it to like a different background stuff something like something will it, it just makes it nicer um, it can cause problems like I'm going to show you here there it, it cropped in a little bit too much so what you can do if that's the case is you can remake the selection so you command or control click on the mask again that'll make the selection so and then you hide the selection uh, command H if your paintbrush selected 100% make sure it's set to white um, oh, when, when you do command hide things it might ask you to hide extras and whatever uh, just make sure you hide the extras it it'll be in view here um, the extras control H so it's, it's it's basically hide but it also hides the extras just uh, take note of that that'll like hide things like this like if you had lines and shit here you see it hides it with your selection but anyway okay so my selection is not inverted I've got a selection active it's on hide painting in white 100% and make sure your mask is selected um, always if you want to edit the mask make sure the mask is selected because if you unselect the mask I'm going to start painting on the actual pixels and that is destructive and you don't want that right so um, click on mask, the mask will have a little white box when it is selected now I can paint on the mask, selection is active and you see the making that corner all nice and cornery again you can do this for all the corners um, just make sure your brush is 100% the hardness of your brush doesn't matter as much I tend to use a soft brush but sometimes I use a hard brush it, it doesn't matter it's like for this specific uh, thing like the that matters more if you if you um, have like really specific things you want to paint and stuff but here I'm just doing this you don't have to do this either because usually it's like zoomed out really far you can't even see the corner points but uh, I'm just doing this for the sake of showing that you can do it if you're if it, if, if it matters, like if your image is like super zoomed in um, I'll come back to the blurring just now just doing this quickly if it does crop in like like over here you can actually um, command D is to deselect your selection you can actually go and um, like paint in a little bit like smoother like that um, if you really want to but uh, like I said most of the time it's going to be zoomed out really far and it wouldn't matter um, okay cool so we've got this woman another reason to um, um, to to feather and crop in your mask with the softened edge a little bit is uh, it's hard to see here because of the background color being quite dark but sometimes this bits of the background that sticks through I'm gonna just make a selection and invert a selection hide it brush make sure it's on black so sometimes the, the background might still shine through if it does do that you can actually go and while the selection is active inverted and your black and 100% brush is selected you can actually go and paint where the background shows through to get rid of um, any sort of halo effects 
or just the background showing through a halo effect is something different. Uh, that's like the lighting hitting the image, but we'll deal with that just now. Um, so you can just go and look and see, can you see the background anywhere if, if it's like undesirable, like here by the dress, I can see, so I can just paint bits. What this will do is it will harden that bit, so what you, you can just feather it, the selection again and keep doing it until. The other thing you can do is you can actually, uh, no, it's a bit of one smooth load. Let me just not do that for now. Um, I might show it just here where the dress is because of these bits and pieces that I added here to the dress. Um, so that's blurry. So here you can see now how weird it looks because the rest of the pixels are super blurry with the edges like crisp. It, it looks like, yeah, it doesn't look nice. So I'll, I'll get to that just now. Okay, I think that it's just fine so far. Um, yeah. See, so I constantly change between my zoom and um, my brush tools and whatever, just to kind of get a overall look of, uh, of the um, image. And just to make sure like where I'm at and if what I'm doing is actually looking decent. Okay, so next I'm going to add this blur. Um, so I'm going to deselect again and control D. Now with the mask selected, this is kind of like, it's not like super accurate. You have to kind of guess and just look at it judge it by with your eye just to see if, if it works for you or not but so at the top here with your mouse selected filter your blur you use um, Gaussian blur or however you want to pronounce it I'm just gonna say Gaussian blur you don't have to you, I guess you can use these other blurs but honestly that's like the most average blur to use so okay so you want to kind of see Two pixels is probably fine for this. You can turn on the preview. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna do two pixels for now. So just go okay. So the problem with that is I've blurred my entire image um my entire like edge now or deep edge or whatever in my mask so you can see it's been blurred all over the place so i don't want that so what i do is in the history state here you want to um tick this box that will make it an active state for the history brush um which i'll explain like i'll, I'll show you how, how it works and then you want to go back one state, right? Um, so just make sure you click on the spirit state. Um, so the shortcut for history versus Y. Um, you can also click here on the side. Uh, it's called history brush tool. So you want to make sure it's set to history brush. And you want to make sure that that state is um, has been ticked here in the little tick box. Then um, 100% is ideal opacity and flow mode normal all that and the hardness doesn't matter because uh, um, to enlarge and make your brush bigger and smaller is the is the brackets square brackets next to P on the keyboard the left bracket makes it smaller and the right bracket makes it bigger, the, the brush size. So you can, yeah. Cool, so wherever, um, so now when I paint with the history brush, because that state is active, it'll paint towards that history state. So it's kind of like you're painting into the future in a way. Um, I'll show in and maybe it makes sense. Um, so because, remember this was the Gaussian blur state, right? But 
if you look at my mask there you can see like I'm actually painting in the blur like over there and then this will just look but now it looks like this is is actually blurry you know it doesn't have a crisp edge you just want to be careful when you get to parts that that you always want to turn your mask on and off um, shift click on it just to see what parts are actually blurry and which parts aren't when you do get to parts that aren't blurry you, blurry, you want to try only go up to about there and that's when you want to change your opacity um, because then you can kind of create like a fade uh, just gently like you know fade it in like that um, if you did end up doing something uh, like this where you made this edge unblurry what you can use is dodge and the dodge and burn tool uh, the shortcut is O but you want to the dodge and burn shares the same so dodge what it does is it it um, increases it tends to increase like the highlights um, I've actually set mine to highlights. Usually, I think it's on midtones. It might be the default, but uh, for dodge, I, I, I recommend setting it to highlights. Then it'll it'll affect it'll pick up the highlights more than the midtones. And then burn is the opposite. You want to make that uh, affect the the shadows. Um, so you can put it on a hard brush. I'm just going to leave it on a soft brush for now. Um, so, it actually, yeah, so, it does build, like, if you just hold down the brush, it does actually, like, build up, so that's why it's on such a low pass, um, exposure or whatever for me, so then you see I can actually just paint in, and then you want to switch kind of between them, so the bur the, the burn will pick up the blacks of the mask, so it'll actually hide that but do you see there now it's like nice and smooth again or crisp or whatever cool so I'm gonna go back to history brush just painting all of these bits I'm just doing this quickly um, everywhere where it's blurry I'm not gonna go 100% like it here's the same thing I'm just going to do it like super roughly. If you do have different like um, blurriness levels, or I don't know how to say it, in your image, um, you, you might want to use multiple blurs. It's always better to start on a low one, like you'd start on like one pixel and then go from there from like maybe three pixels to kind of build up. So like let's say this area was like super blurry compared to like there you can see it is like super blurry compared to like this area. What I would do is I would first um, do the two pic well it, on the current one it's set to two pixels remember. I would first paint that in everywhere where I want um, to add that blurriness. And then once I've done that, I would actually go and um, well, first of all, I'll make I'll crop in my selection a little bit again. No, okay, wait. Let's let's roll in. Let's roll just add more blurs to for now. Um, so make sure my mouse selected. I'll just go to filter again, blur, version blur. Um, and then I would add, let's say, a four four pixel blur. You can toggle it, <coughs> toggle it on and off. So there, you can see that um, it is a lot blurrier. So that's fine. Um, so this will create a new Gaussian blur. You want to make that your current like history state. So you can only ever have one history state active at a time. Um, then you make sure you click there again. Now when I do start, the problem is I'm get, you're going to lose this history state, that's why you want to use it as much as possible before making a new one. Um, yeah, just as a note. And then you want to paint this bit, just click the mask on and off, 
Let's put blurry over there as well. See, and now it kind of looks natural. More natural. Um, some of the background will start showing through because remember the background's still there. Um, um, one way to deal with this is you can just make the selection again, invert, hide the selection. Um, you can actually just go and uh, paint with black just where you think it's like showing through a bit. Like over here, I would do that. You see, it's still. Oh, shit, what did I do now? Oh, sorry, my mouse like fucked up. Um, see, even even though I'm cropping in now into the, my image, it still looks not like relatively natural. It still has that sort of blurriness to it. Doing this like a relatively, like roughly, it looks fine. This one will be quite heavy because the, obviously the softer the edge is, the the more heavier the brush will affect it. If you do find that the brush affects it too much, you can turn the opacity down, um, like to thirty percent. But then obviously you have to go over it way more. Um, yeah. Um, and there we go. We've got like the woman, some different backgrounds. And just make sure I de um, deselect my control D to make sure my selection is no longer active. Save my image. It's always good to save your image. And then, uh, yeah, so now I can add like, I mean, if I wanted to add like color adjustments or whatever to her default. Um, yeah. um, to delete layers is backspace. Um, Photoshop might give you a warning to ask if you want to make, or are you sure you want to delete it? Just say, don't ask me again, because it's really irritating. Um, and also you, to, to move layer, the mask around, you can just click drag onto different layers. Um, to copy the mask, you can hold down Alt, click and drag. If you see there, I copied the mask. Um, and to delete the mask, you can just right click on it and delete layer mask. You can also apply the layer mask. That is basically like deleting the pixels, like I said, don't do. Um, so rather don't do that. Um, if you feel like you are finished with your, like, if you're not going to use, um, like, any of the layers and stuff, it's better to save, uh, like, save as a new, like, maybe a final version or whatever. If you do want to do that, you, you can merge all the layers into, a, like, you can right-click, like, off the side here. You just go merge group, and that'll merge everything. Um, in the group and then you can also just delete and then so it's like all of your stuff will get merged basically into the group and the mask and that'll it'll um, reduce the size of your file uh, if but then I wouldn't I would never save over my working file just so I can go back um, And edit stuff while I, I want to edit stuff. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm gonna. I think I'll keep going for now. I'm just gonna show you kind of how I would get rid of this stuff. Um, leaves and crap at the bottom here. So, what I would do is I would create a new layer. Make sure you have no like selections active when you hang out because otherwise it's gonna create a mask. So to make a new layer, you can, I use Control shift n or Command shift n that'll make a new layer. I'm going to just call this um, Halo or slash clone or whatever. Um, so it's an empty layer. So, so this is ideal for 
you never want to work on your actual pixel layer. If you do do that, it's better to duplicate this just so you, you have something to go back on. But I usually find it better to work on empty layers if I want to edit the pixels, the, the pixels at all. Um, so we're going to use the clone stamp. It's S is the, um, the shortcut. Make sure it's set to clone stamp tool and not whatever this other thing is. I've never used it, so I don't know. Um, like, uh, like Photoshop's a tool, so you don't have to know everything to do what you need to do. And there's like very specific things. Like I'm by no means like, a, I don't know everything to do with like the program. It's unnecessary to know everything. You just know what you, you need to know, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, so with the clone stamp active, it's basically a brush that copies information um, depending on where, what your target point is. So first of all, you want this to 100% is, I think the default is 100%. If it's not in 100% um, opacity, just set it to 100% for now. I might change that while as I was um, as I'm working, but I, I'm going to uh, make sure aligned is um, if aligned is not on. What it will do is it will always reset the target point instead of moving along as you painting. Um, so the sample you want to set to current and below. If it's set to current layer, what it does is it'll sample only from the layer that you have active. That's that's fine if you actually working on the, the whatever layer like the pixels sampling from the layer that you're on but to work safely and non-destructively you want to rather create an empty layer like I said set it to current and below your claim stamp my brush's hardness is set to the softest at the moment um, to bring this menu up is right click uh, if I mention cool so I got clone stamp to make set to get up um, a target point, you hold down um, Alt or Option, and then you just click. Um, so this takes practice. It's a little bit more advanced, but uh, the more you do it, the sort of easier it becomes, and you eventually don't even think about it. You just do it. So now I've set it over here, right? So what I, my idea is to get rid of this twig. Um, so I look at, at the surrounding pixels and I choose a po point where I think will blend the best with this. And then I c just start painting. Um, it doesn't have to be super accurate. You just want to get rid of, so I'm just basically painting that away. Um, and then once I've done that, I'll go and sample another layer. You, you always like create, gathering, um, sampling from different areas around just to keep um, blending the, blending the pixels as nicely as, as possible. Why is it doing that? Um, sorry, sometimes my, um, computer like fucks out for some reason and it uh, when I press space for it it's like trying to pick up uh, open up some like uh, these menus up here and it, I don't know I don't know why um, so yeah so you see I, I keep like just pressing or holding alt and sampling new areas to um, sample creating new areas to sample from it doesn't have to, it doesn't even have to be close to the top. I mean I can sample from here because I think maybe that looks like a shadow that could be added there or from here if it's too light. You know it's it's kind of like an I suppose the most artistic uh, thing about retouching is figuring out these sort of things. Um, again to change your brush brush sizes the uh, the brackets um, so you can make your brush bigger or smaller. I like to use a, not a too big brush or small brush. 
you can also change the hardness of your brush. <coughs> I find that especially especially things that are very textured like wood or hard like maybe 50% 60% brush is good to use. The problem is um, it'll create like you'll st it's hard to show. You know, it's hard to show here, but it, it tends to create these weird smudge effects if your brush is too hard. Um, it, it does that with um, the soft brush as well, but we're going to try sort that out with um, another tool, which is the healing brush. So that's J. So the healing brush and the clone stamp works. They work really well together. Um, healing brush it's so you want to make sure healing brush tool is set and you also want to make sure that it's set to aligned and current and below so what's cool is the the healing brush <coughs> sorry the healing brush and the clone stamp they they keep the same sample point so so you can go and like um, I'll try I'll try to show you. So you, you can kind of like go and you know go crazy and do this. And then if you change the healing brush, so the healing brush blends. It blends the pixels. It's hard to see here because, <laughs> because it's it's all white. Um, I'll try to show it a bit better later, but. Um, Let me try to show you here. So let's say, like I do this, right? So that looks like terrible, right? Um, but now, if if I use the healing brush, so shortcut J, and I kind of paint over it roughly, you see it, it will blend. It will blend the pixels. This can cause like problems sometimes, like there you saw. Um, so you want to make sure that, especially textured. Um, textured like really heavily textured um, images it can cause problems um, especially if you go close to the edge and stuff I'll sh try to show you here that you see it does like a weird like a weird smudgy thing that's not ideal so yeah so when you use the clone stamp and healing brush you keep swapping between them yes clone stamp J for you. Um, so I'm not going to do this whole. Uh, maybe I should just do it. So I'm just going to do this like really roughly. Um, you want to try line up things like that. Folds and things. Try to fake it. Uh, no one's going to know. Like if you do it really well, um, you want to try and make it so that it looks like the image hasn't been worked on. Um, so here is a part where I would make use a harder brush because that looks like terrible make it smaller maybe um, I'll click somewhere and then if you shift click somewhere else it'll uh, it was hard to sh tell there but it tends to make a straight line I'm gonna just exaggerate see it makes a straight line um, so I'm just gonna undo that and then I'll go back to my soft brush again um, to keep kind of working. You can also just make your brush smaller if you want to make a hard edge, but then it'll take years to um, get anywhere. I don't know if this is like super accurate. My screen is, I got a terrible like, um, my screen is not ideal for, for retouching honestly. Uh, like, I don't know why it, it like picks up brightness incorrectly. I think it's fine for this, um, but if you want to be super accurate, especially if you're working for print, like with print, you, you want to, you want, you need a better screen to represent colors accurately because you want, you need to calibrate your screen. Um, so that the, the colors that you see on screen is the exact well, not maybe 100%, but like maybe 80% or 85%, the same as what you will see when it comes back from the printers. 
because it is terrible when it looks great on screen and then what you get back from the printer is a black blob of colors because your screen is actually set way brighter than than what the print the printer's um, color profile set but yeah that's that's only if you work for printers. Usually printers will give you color profiles and things to work with. Um, or they'll they'll have like a document and say, oh, we use this, um, you know, whatever color setting. Because different pigments, different inks and all that shit has uh, different ways of printing. Um, cool, so I'm just roughly doing this, still using the clone stamp trying to get rid of um, all these leaves and things. I mean this obviously depends um, on the image that you have. Your image might, if it was shot in the studio or something, it won't have like all these extra crap things. Uh, this doesn't really matter. Let's try roughly blend it. I mean, like I said before, like, unless you, some crazy person that loves to, like, zoom in with, like, a, into images for whatever reason, no one's gonna, like, eat, oh, sorry about the sound, if it, I hope it doesn't record the sound, but if it does, my, sometimes when I use spacebar, my computer, like, fucks off for some reason, um, I don't know if it's, like, a sticky key thing, or, Um, what was I saying? Yeah, right, so like no one's gonna ever know, it's like, I mean, look, when I zoom out, no one's gonna know that that used to have leaves there, you know? Um, so here's the advantage of working like this on a separate layer. I can turn this layer off and on whenever I want, right? Um, you can see that there's like some mistakes here, but if you didn't know this layer existed, you, you wouldn't be able to tell that, that there used to be leaves and crap there. Um, so yeah, uh, this bit's a bit trickier, so there, because it looks a little bit like painty, I'm going to use the healing brush again, just to try blend it a little bit, make it a bit more textured. Uh, so here's a part where you can... I'm on clone stamp again. I'm going to set the opacity to 30. Uh, doesn't have to be 30. But uh, so now I can gently, like, kind of paint it away. Um, I, I don't often use this because it can smudge, it can create like a smudge effect. You won't be able to tell as much here because it's white. Um, white pixels and it tends to blend a bit better so as you can use a soft a softer brush uh, I mean a less like a lower opacity on the brush if you if you want to but it's better to not do it like this it's it kind of comes of experience you'll um, You'll know when to do it and when like not to do it. The more like obviously the more you do it. Um, so I set it to 100% again. Uh, shit. So you see here, this is obviously a stand of sorts. So what I can do is I'm going to actually edit my mask. So I'm going to brush B. I'm actually going to make it a hard brush, um, not 100%, but let's say about 85 and I'm actually going to paint away this like just really roughly just to show you that you can edit your mask um, kind of freehand see so I'm just going to paint paint it away I'm using a harder brush because I want to try um, imitate the rest of my mask um, shift, I usually shift click so what I would do, if, if I cropped in too much here, I would change to white. So I'm using shift-click to make straight lines. 
So what you do is you, you click once, you hold shift, click at a different and it will make a straight line to, to that point. And then the rest of this you can just paint away like, oh, I should have made a mistake there. I could have gone and just painted that back, but I um, automatically pressed uh, Control Z. So, yeah, and that, that looks fine. So, there, now we have a stand. Um, cool, so I'm going to go back to my clone healing stamp thing layer and just roughly get rid of this. Um, you see, there, like, that's a one problem with cloning, like it might be better to sample at a bigger area. Um, but you want to just be careful to not clone it in a way where you cut into your mask in a weird way. Uh, there you can see my mistake on my mask. It's going to go back. So it's just constant editing back and forth. That's why it's nice to have it like this. Uh, and not um, I have deleted all my pixels. Look, most people tend to do, if they haven't been trained properly, um, but yeah, cool. So they dress kind of sorted. This bit irritates me a little bit, so taking some artistic license and just gonna cut that away because it looks garbage. Um, uh, let's just try and make it a little bit better. Lower opacity again, just to paint it away softly, so it's not so harsh. Because your eyes tend to pick up like things that really stand out uh, in a harsh way. There you go. That looks so much better. Cool, so 100% opacity again. Um, obviously, there's tire treads here. On my screen, it's very dark, I can't really see. Um, ideally, you would go and create uh, curves or whatever highlights there just to lift this a bit. Now I can see the treads um, of, the, of the tires. So, with this layer on, I would try and kind of match it. Maybe sample from here to create like a fake tread here. I think that's what it's called, tread. I don't know. We'll see that the color is not blending properly, but that's fine. Because um, I can use the healing brush to, to blend that a bit better. Um, just now. At the moment, I'm not worrying about it too much. Because I know I can, I can go and blend it after I've removed most of the... Most of the um, grass and or whatever that you wanted to remove, if there was like mud or something. Like that. Cool, and then I'll use my healing brush, make it a bit bigger sample, and then just way try not to go to the edge. Let's try like that. It's not playing. Uh, so you see, it's picking up this thread here. <sighs> Fuck. There we go. You can also use the clone stamp on a lower opacity if you want to blend color. Um, select a darker area maybe, like here, I want to make it a bit darker. Uh, okay, let's just save it. See when I turn it off, you, like on my screen I can't even see it, so whatever. Um, if you do have stuff like this where the wheel looks a bit weird, you can just again with... Um, you can actually make, you can make a separate pen, like, just to crop it in a bit. You can make a separate selection, just like a rough selection. You'll see that it's made a new path and just make a selection from that. And with the selection active, um, you can invert it, um, and then just paint, I'd feather it actually, because, um, just to try and match it, um, with my other thing, and then you can actually just go and is it not working? Uh, I don't have the mask active. So always make sure you have the mask active. And then they just paint it away. Uh, it looks a bit better. It could probably go a bit better, but you get the idea. 
Cool, so I go back to my toning. I don't like this grass here, so I'm just going to sample. I'm actually using just using the healing brush. Get rid of that. And um, you'll see it's made a bit of a weird smudge. Can just... Okay. Um, yeah. So obviously the back wheel here still has like shit here. Same thing. Maybe I should just keep going and actually finish this. Um, I know the video is quite long. I might break this up into two parts. But this is generally how I would go about working um, on an image. Most of the time the images aren't like as complicated, it's usually like a lot simpler images. Like this with the bike and the woman and everything and the, removing all of this crap. It's like a lot of extra stuff that generally you won't have to deal with. Especially if you're working for like a studio or something, um, or a, I don't know, magazine company or or whatever. They tend to have like photographers and things that know how to shoot, um, professionals that know how to like shoot images and prepare for. Not always, obviously. You get sometimes you have to deal with shitty photographers and. That's just part of the part of the job, I guess. Uh, so I'm using the low opacity. It's usually good. Um, I'm trying to kind of fake the shadow here. It's good when it's a blur, blurry like this. It's a bit better to use low opacity um, clone stamp. I'm using 40%. I thought it was on 30 or whatever. Um, I'm going to actually find a bigger area, maybe here, just to roughly get rid of this always sample. What you can do is you can turn off aligned, then it will always snap back as soon as you stop. Um, I don't know if you can see here at the top there's a little cross that shows my, my point where it's sampling from. See, it, it constantly snaps back to where I made it now because the line is turned off. Uh, oh, shit. Um, I'm just going to turn the line on again. I think that's fine. Um, obviously, reflections and things are are difficult to deal with. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even try to... Um, It's like a, it's like a problem on its own. You have to kind of figure out what the best way of doing it is. Um, often it's it's easier to just to to just blur it um, or smudge it or something just to kind of make it look like it that it doesn't exist in the same space as where the image was taken from. But uh, ideally your image would not have reflections in them and if they do it's better to kind of try to fake it like I would I would actually make a, a path for this I'm just gonna try to do it roughly it's not gonna look great but uh, you'd actually fill it with a color of sorts like let's say white or whatever or gray um, so I made it with a mask with a solid color. You can change this color. Uh, it's solid color is great adjustment um, layer. Often use it for um, skies, like extensions and things. It's nice to recreate skies. Um, you could probably use it for other things, but uh, like for reflections. So here I would I would try to. Oh, it's a hard brush soft brush. I would try hide the reflection more than anything. I kind of just paint in with that sort of vibe. Um, see it's on 40% opacity. So it looks crap at the moment because you know what was there. 
But if you zoom out, oh, it looks crap. <laughs> Either way. Um, yeah, so it's difficult to deal with reflections. It's probably better just to blur this. Um, you can do that on a. I'm going to create a new layer uh, again. I'm just going to call it blur slash smudge or whatever. How do you spell smudge? Whatever. Call it blur. Um, if you go to your smudge tool, you can sample all layers, and then you can kind of just shake it. It's not ideal. So that's one way of doing it. This is probably not the best way because it's sampling actually sampling all layers, which is not it's not ideal. But that's kind of one way of doing it is to kind of try blur it. You can also um, copy these pixels um, if you don't know M. M is to make a, the marquee. Is it called marquee? I think you pronounce it marquee. Um, mine's set to tri triangle. You can right click uh, there via copy. That will actually copy that bit. And then you can actually add a blur to that. Um, set it to how much ever you want to blur it. Maybe like that. Um, and then you can actually just mask this out um, to invert so if you have no selections active you can still make masks but the mask will be completely like white um, but you can invert that with command i if the mask is active um, and then i'm just going to press command i i'll show you see now it's not active, active. No, there. so the pixels are still there the blurred pixels now the soft brush, you can actually just go paint it in very lightly. I mean, this is going to give it like a bit of like heavenly or whatever you know that sort of dreamy aspect um, thing. Like they usually show like soap operas and shit. They add this like kind of blur, but if you zoom out, it kind of works. You know, turn it on and off. Ugh, not that much. Yeah, so honestly, try get an image that doesn't have reflections. Um, it's it's a it's a bit more advanced. It's quite because uh, you have to kind of figure out what how to um, deal with it. Uh, most of the time, people won't ask you to get rid of reflections, but if they do. I would use, um, it's a technique called, I think it's called separ separation frequencies, where you separate the color from the texture of your image. Um, I might do a tutorial on that, but uh, you just search separation, fre it might be frequency separations, it's one of the two. I call it frequency separation, but um, you can always just search for that. That separates the color from the texture, and then you can you can actually just get rid of the reflection in that way. It's that's probably the best way of doing it, um, I think. So yeah, cool. So there's the that's basically the edge. Um, you can also obviously make shadows and stuff. Shadows is another like a mission uh, that. There's no right way of doing it. It's just kind of like you try, and if it doesn't work, a lot of the time you can try and fake the shadows of this. Like I would actually go and um, check how the shadows looked here, and uh, just make a path for it, um, and then try and fake it in that way. It's not ideal. It's well, it's not the best way. Like I said, there's no not really a best way. Um, if it was shot in the studio it's it's easier because generally the sh you can actually just use the shadows that as the as they are by making a, a proper like mask for them. Uh, like 
Oh, you'd make a channel mask. Um, and I'll try and explain. I might I'm probably make a different video for that. I'm going to do the hair similarly. I'm not going to do it in this video. I feel like I've been rambling on for about probably like fucking two hours now. So it's getting a bit long. So I need a path um, for the shadow. So what I would do is I would use solid color. And there we go, that's a basic shadow, obviously you don't want it that dark, but it depends, maybe you do want it that dark. Um, this is obviously not ideal, so what you would do is, you can, I would actually make this into separate like, kind of layers, I would, I, I usually make a, a group similar to how I would make my mask. Um, I mean my, my, my edge, I would make a separate group for the shadow, um, and then the main like shadow, I would make a mask for that, which is like the whole shadow combined, and then I would add a blur to that. Um, I like using motion blur, because if you look at shadows, they, they usually blur in almost like a direct in a direction so motion blur is nice for that to kind of fake it um, I'm gonna just exaggerate here with like 50 or whatever uh, if you can see him let me just do it like this rather you see the um, so the motion blur will only go upwards and here on the edge um, so there we go um, so I like to do it horizontally usually. There we go. Maybe a little bit like that. It's like a, there's a lot of play around with it. Um, you have to kind of just experiment. So I would add a motion blur usually. I mean that in itself looks kind of okay. Like if you zoom out, you're not going to go like, oh, that looks cuck. It looks fine, right? Um, obviously, like I said, black is a bit harsh. You want to maybe use that and then add extra like stuff on top of that so I would duplicate this mask out like this put it on multiply I don't know if if you haven't used Photoshop over here where it says normal that's blending modes so multiply what what it does is it takes whatever whatever's on that layer the layer that you have selected and it basically adds all of its information to the to whatever's below it um, layer wise, so it'll darken it. Now it's completely um, masked out here, but if I go and paint on my mask, on the soft opacity and soft brush, I can kind of be, you see, so now you can kind of do stuff like that where you think, I mean this is obviously super rough, you can also just make a selection and make another mask, for, like a proper mask for this. Um, well obviously we had contact, the contact shadow is usually darker and then you can actually just go on your main mask, so this is this is like a nested uh, a mask within a, <laughs> within a mask, like this mask affects this mask but this mask doesn't affect that mask as much if that makes sense, maybe that's not the best way of explaining it, it's like a nested uh, group thing and then this, because it's on multiply, it'll actually darken this, um, the pixels or color or whatever below it. Um, so I'd go and actually soften, soften. Yeah, or like whatever, like, not the best shadow in the world, but you can add like Gaussian blurs and stuff, and you can use the history brush again to paint in areas of blur and whatever you need. Cool. Um, so let's just change this to. There we go. Obviously, that looks the shadow is not going to work on a different colored background. Um, you can put the group on a blending mode as well. Um, I put it on multiply. There. Um, 
Yeah, that's the one. So I'm not gonna do the hair for this one because that's like a thing on its own, like channel masking. Um, and this is not. It's okay, but you can see that the background's a bit dark. I mean, the woman's hair is not super advanced. Maybe this bit here might be because it's a bit more wispy, or whatever. But more than often, more, more often than not. Um, the designers or stylists or whoever is in charge, art director or whatever, creative director, they will want you to get rid of any of these like loose hairs. They call them flyaways or whatever, um, or friths or because it looks unneat. Um, you know, like people don't like to see unneat things, so they would like actually just trim these hairs off. Um, a lot of the times. So yeah, it's not really your call as as a retoucher or an etcher or whatever. You don't really have the range. You're basically just a, a slave to the system. And you get told what to do and you just have to do it to the best of your ability. So no ethics involved and you don't really have a say. Or you don't, get, <laughs> you don't have a job, basically. So yeah. Um, Cool, so I'm going to stop there for now, if there are any questions and shit, just, uh, yeah, just, I don't know, I've, I've never done the YouTube thing, so, you can leave comments, try apply to them, or as best I can, if I was rambling on a lot, uh, sorry about that, the video is a bit long, like I said, I might break this up into two videos, I probably will, um, I have recorded, like, them in two separate sessions anyway, so cool, until then, ciao.